after years of cooperation and unity, none but those on the political extremes would question that we are stronger together, safer together than ever we are apart. Now, on behalf of the Independence and Democracy Group, Nigel Farage, three minutes. Minister, you received some criticism this afternoon for your comment, British jobs for British workers, but you can brush that aside. Because from the moment you said it, I don't think anybody seriously thought that you would ever, as a British Prime Minister, put the interests of British workers above that of your European dream. And my goodness me, you showed that this afternoon. It's just a pity that apart from UKIP, virtually nobody seems to have bothered to turn up to listen to you. No, you're very popular here. You're very popular indeed, because within a few days of the Irish saying no to the Lisbon Treaty, you had rammed that treaty through the British Parliament and you'd done it, breaking a specific... You see, I said you were popular. You did it breaking a specific Mesto pledge that you would give the British people a referendum on the Constitutional Treaty. Shame on you, Prime Minister, for doing that. You have devalued democracy in our country. You have devalued the trust that voters have got in you as a British Prime Minister. But, of course, we know the reason why. The reason why is that we would have voted no. You said in your speech that none but those on the extremes oppose European Union. Well, that may be right amongst professional career politicians, but a clear majority of the British people want us to have friendship and free trade with the European Union, but do not want to be members of this political union. You cannot, you cannot continue against public opinion to build this European Union. If you do it against the will of the people, you are storing up enormous social and political problems for the future. Please, please, let the peoples of Europe decide their destiny. Don't have it done in parliaments like this and parliaments like Westminster. It won't work. And as far as the economy is concerned, you've told us that somehow you're the economic guru. You're the man that can save the world. Well, I remember very well your first big act as Chancellor when you sold 400 metric tonnes of gold on the world's exchanges at $275 an ounce. At today's valuation, that would be $10 billion higher. But it isn't just the fact you got it wrong, because we can all get it wrong. It was the fact that you announced in advance how much you were going to sell and on what day you were going to sell it. It was a, an error so basic that the average A-level economic student, even in these educationally devalued times, wouldn't have done. To add to that, you've destroyed our private pension system. You took away from the Bank of England its ability to regulate the banks and gave it to the tick-box bureaucrats at the FSA in Canary Wharf. And we haven't heard an apology. Your government has apologised for the Amritsar massacre. You've apologised for slavery. You've apologised for virtually everything. Will you please apologise for what you did as British Chancellor? And then perhaps we might just listen to you. Thank you. Für die Fraktions